By the end of today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can use Zapier and any email provider you have to start automatically responding to emails. We're gonna start using artificial intelligence which can integrate into Zapier to start personalizing emails and automatically responding to emails. Therefore, two major things you should know. First major thing, yes, it works with Gmail. And yes, the automation you'll see today works with Outlook as well. So you're telling me, Corbin, all I have to do is watch this video and I'll be able to start automatically responding to emails, saving time in my business and doing stuff I actually care about. Yes, let's jump in. Welcome back, y'all. Today's video is sponsored by Zapier, but as you already know, we've been working with Zapier for quite a while now. In collaboration with Zapier, if you want more content, by me, I'm on the Zapier channel as well. So go ahead and subscribe here as well to check out all the automations I've been creating quite recently. Today's video is on my channel. The next video will be on their channel, vice versa. The automation we create in today's video will be in the description down below. All you gotta do is click it, it's for free, get going. Here's how we're gonna approach today's video. So as we know with any type of business, you're getting a ton of emails. And as we know, when you get these emails, it can get annoying because there's just too many. So we're gonna go ahead and set an automation here where we'll automatically create a draft email to respond to all these customer inquiries to ensure that when we approach each email, we already have a template already filled out for us. So to start off here, typically in the context of business, we have some type of lead form. So we're gonna go ahead and create a lead form using Zapier interfaces. However, you typically receive customer inquiries, whether it is a pop-up form on your website, a Google form, or alternatively, someone just directly contacting your email. This will apply to all of that. Create a form. Let's go ahead and jump in. Now, what's great about Zapier interfaces, tables, and this entire ecosystem is that they interconnect. So it's gonna make this process a little bit more simple, but this can be applied to any type of app that integrates with Zapier. And on top of that, any type of app that has API or ability just to access it. For now though, let's create a form. We're gonna hit add. Once we've added our form here, let's add the relevant information that we typically care about in an inquiry. So obviously we gotta talk to the person that reaches out to us. So we'll have an email. We'll go ahead and add a, another box here for name. Scroll down here. We're going to go ahead and hit insert field. I'm going to go ahead and drag this up here. Now that we get the name, we get the email. What else do we need? We are a lawn mowing business. So let's go ahead and also get what they're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and change this type here to drop down. In the drop down, we're going to do services. Let's go with lawn mowing, trimming, and weed control. Now that we have these three services outlined in our drop down here, we can go ahead and hit insert field. Now, something I wanna make very clear here is that you don't necessarily need some type of static input like this. What you'll see in this video is that we can handle any type of incoming email and really approach it however we want. And that's due to the fact of artificial intelligence ability to actually analyze the email and respond in a manner that is relevant to us. Knowing this though, let's add one last item here. The last item we're going to add here is going to be square feet because in order to accurately quote someone or at least put them in the right direction, and this is also going to give us context of how big of a business slash personal home we're dealing with here, we need to know the square footage. We'll go ahead and make sure we choose number here and insert field. Now that we got the fields that are relevant to us when it comes to a customer inquiry, let's go ahead and create a zap here that will trigger based off the submission. As I said before, this could be any submission, pop up on your website, Google form, type form, et cetera. To do so, in this context, we're gonna hit actions here, add action, form submit, run zap, create zap. Zap, 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 zap. Let's go ahead and add some test data here so we have something to play around with and we're not just dealing with a bunch of empty variables. Let's enter some information in. I'm gonna go ahead and take the initiative here. I'm gonna say, my name is John, put my Wabrista email in there. I'm gonna say, my services is lawn mowing and then the square footage is 2,500. This is all gonna be relevant to us as each one of these variables is going to take the artificial intelligence response down a different path. Hit submit. Once we've submitted it, we can go ahead and just test this trigger. We should get our test data here. There we go. And actually what's really cool about Zapier is that if you didn't wanna go through that little process there, they actually give you test data naturally. Keep that in mind. We're gonna do forward submission B here. Let's go ahead and add our next step here. In this next step, we're gonna do ChatGPT. With ChatGPT and its actions, we have a bunch of different options. But in the context of how we wanna approach this, you have two major ones you can go with, either conversation with assistant or conversation. Now, typically you can just align with conversation or specialized versions is with assistant, which we can jump into in future videos. For now, we'll do conversation. Continue, choose your account, and here we go. First thing you should identify is now we can use GPT-4 on Mini, which is a very advanced model from OpenAI. This is gonna allow us to get very, very cost-effective use cases for AI and have really, really good outputs. Sound good? Let's go ahead and make our prompt. Context, we are a lawn mowing business. 
named Green Acres Estate. We have received the following customer inquiry, semicolon. And here's what I want you to identify for yourself. First thing is that any first line in a prompt is going to be context. We want to give the chat bot an understanding of what the heck it's even reading. Next thing, context of what the business is. Or a lawn mowing business? Are you a web design business? Are you a coffee shop? Whatever you are. Next, the name of the business. What's your name? For this one, we're just going to say Green Acres Estate. And finally, what is the data that we're receiving and how is it relevant? For us, it's we're receiving a customer inquiry and obviously through email or alternatively a form submission. With this, we can say customer inquiry, semicolon. And then we're going to go ahead and every single one of these variable points will go ahead and identify. Now to be clear, if the customer inquiry that's coming in is the body of the email, you would simply put body email, semicolon, parentheses, and then input the body of the email. In this context, because it is a form, we're going to do each one as its own line. I'm going to scroll down here, and here is the relevant data. So we're going to do name, put in the parentheses, name. We're going to go ahead and put services, semicolon, parentheses. Now, why do I use parentheses? Why, why are you using parentheses, Corbin? I don't understand. I like using parentheses as it, it allows the chat GPT prompt to identify that this is the specific variable we're talking about. No overflow. Don't want that. So we're going to go ahead and do services here, lawn mowing. And then finally the square foot, square feet, semicolon, parentheses. Go ahead and put whatever your relevant information is. Maybe you want to put the email subject line, the email body, proceed in that manner. Now, before we create a effective draft response here, because of the fact that we're not using assistant where we can load in data and then reference a chat GPT endpoint that is specialized in our business, we're gonna add more context of what the Green Acres estate is, our typical way of responding and everything above the board in that manner. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do Green Acres estate and we'll put context. With the Green Acres context here, let's add some information that we want to show up or we know shows up in a lot of these emails so we don't have to keep typing it out. So first off, we can just start off by saying tone, business casual, or is your tone funny? Or is your tone mean? I don't, don't be mean, unless like that's part of the service. I don't know <laughs> how to respond if, semicolon, lawn mowing. And this is where we're gonna list out all of our relevant information that we care about. So for us, we have three major services and we have a variable point of square feet. Therefore, depending on the type of service, we may want a different response or if, it's the same response, then don't worry about this part. For us, let's go ahead and try three different ways of approaching the idea of depending on what the user is requesting. So lawn mowing, ask if they are available for a call in the next two days. Ask if there is any animals on site. Maybe that's relevant to lawn mowing. Maybe we don't want to lawn mow and then all of a sudden a gopher gets hit in the head. Who knows? If you can't tell, I don't do a lawn mowing business. If you do, let me know in the comments. Trimming, we can go ahead and say, ask how tall the trees are on site, how many bushes are on site, etc. And then weed control, we could say, ask if they are fine with pesticides. Notice how each one has its very specific inquiry point depending on the email we're receiving. This is important as this allows us to be very specific in our responses, and not too general. And finally, we can do square footage here. I'm gonna go ahead and set up a very simple logic here where if the property is under 3,000 feet, do this. If the property is over 3,000 feet, do this. If the property is over 3,000 feet, because our use case is 2,500, we'll go in and say if the property is under 2,500 feet, so you can kind of see the output in that manner. If the property is under 2,500 feet, don't try to upsell window cleaning services. So this is a very specific use case here. The idea here is this. If the property has more than 2,500 feet, then we're going to assume we could possibly upsell them window cleaning services. But the major thing here is that when you see these outputs and how it's going to output, you're going to identify the fact that window cleaning services never shows up. And the reason it never shows up is because the current property we're dealing with is only 2,500 feet. Sound good? Let's keep going. Coming down here, we're going to add format. In our format, we're going to simply put max of four sentences. This is so that the response doesn't Turn into paragraphs, unless you want paragraphs. If you want paragraphs to say max of 20 sentences, 18, 16, 15, start with the customer's name and so on. Is there specific stuff you want to structure your email in your drafts, what you care about, et cetera. From here, we set up a pretty good prompt. We can go in and lock this in with a memory key. We say biz response 
to customer. This could be anything though. Random string of 32 characters. In theory, I could have just went like this. But let's name it something we can reference later. That's going to allow us so that in long term, we have a ton of emails that we responded to, we get consistent outputs. Does it continue here? Test step. We may need to adjust this prompt slightly depending on whether we want a body or not. And we're good actually. We don't, it didn't output a subject line, but it just went straight to the meat here. So we got, hi John. Thanks for reaching out to Green Acres Estate. We'd love to help you with your lawn mowing needs. Are you available? Notice how it knows it's lawn mowing. Are you available for a quick call in the next two days to discuss your requirements? Notice that it does reference a quick call in two days that we've identified that is important for lawn mowing. Are they available for a call in the next two days? Good. Discuss your requirements. Also, could you let us know if there's any animals on site? Identify that as well. Looking forward to hearing from you. Pretty good. You'll see how we will translate this into an email pretty soon here. But just to prove to you how cool this is, we can go ahead and change lawn mowing to trimming and watch what happens. Copy. Just for an example here, I'm going to continue retest step. This should ask how tall the trees are on the site and how many bushes are on the site. Retest step. Hi, John. Thank you for contacting Green Acres Estate about your trimming needs. Trimming. To better assist you, could you please tell us how tall your trees are? Boom. On your property. And how many bushes you have? Pretty good, y'all. This shows you how this can really apply to very specific use cases when responding to different types of emails that are coming in for your business. Let's go ahead and jump this. We're gonna go ahead and come over to add a step here. This could be Gmail, Outlook, or whatever email provider you use. We're gonna go ahead and do Gmail. With Gmail, we're gonna do either Create Draft Reply or Create Draft. For our context, we're gonna do Create Draft. Continue, choose whatever Gmail account you like. With this connected, we can get going here. So we'll start off by saying Green Acres Estate Inquiry and then the individual's name, which we can find the form submission. Scroll down here, John. Keep going down here. We can go ahead and add our body now from our conversation. Okay, here, this is gonna be reply. Once we added a body here, we can actually add fixed text as well that will show up in every single email. So maybe the last little part we wanna add here is like dash dash Corbin Brown or cheers Corbin Brown. Therefore, we're gonna get a variable or a personalized body of the email for every type of email, but then the end point will, or the end of the email will be cheers, Corbin Brown. This could be links, emails, or just whatever your traditional footer is. Alternatively, if you set up a signature within your Gmail or Outlook, you can add that here as well. So for me, I'll add the signature. And then on top of that, which is really cool, is that we can actually add a label automatically. We can add attachments automatically and do all this as well. But for now, we're going to continue here and we're going to see our draft test step. And here we go. We got our draft here and we got our subject line, Green Acres Estate Inquiry for John. Coming into our email here, you can see we have our signature if you wanted to add it or not. Also, our fixed text, which is Cheers Corbin Brown and our personalized body. Therefore, we just save some time. I don't have to look at that form submission I just received and be like, okay, John trimming 2,500. No, 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 no. Just boom. The automation we created here today can be applied to your business right away. All you got to do is click that little link, share the zap, add the zap, 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 and zap. If you want to see more videos like this, I'm doing a ton of content on Zapier's channel now. And of course, on this channel. So make sure to subscribe to both. Make sure to leave a like. It's completely free. Is it free, Corbin? It's free. And I'll see you in the next video.